What's going on fishing buddies? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you the equipment I'm using, how I'm setting up for fishing out of a kayak for sheep's head. Let's get it out there! Before we get into this guys, I think it's important to let you guys know, I am not a sheep's head expert. <laughs> I've just recently gotten into it. Um, something I knew I wanted to get into in, in the summer because I know these months, these fall running into the winter, these months are hard for fishing around here. And I know that the local guys tear up the sheep's head and I've kind of watched them. I've done my homework. I've done a lot of research. I took what I learned and was able to go out there and be successful. So everything I'm about to show you are just tips and tricks I picked up along the way through research, through asking questions, and it produced some sheep's head for me. So I'm gonna show you guys that today so maybe you have like an all-in-one video of how to get started in the kayak targeting sheep's head. I'm gonna start out showing you guys the two basic setups I, I take. Usually I'm taking three rods when I'm on the kayak. With the sheep's head, I'm only taking two and I'll tell you guys why. Um, the rod that I'm using to target the actual sheep's head is a six foot nine Cajun Coastal, 3000 series reel, 10 pound braid, and I start with 15 pound leader. Um, the reason I like these short rods, the short butt, the shaft isn't so long, you know, the actual rod is because in the kayak, you know, you're pressed for room out there. And so I find with a shorter rod, the butt doesn't hit my forearm as much. You know, I'm able to maneuver it around a lot better. And in reality with a sheep's head, you're not casting, you're not looking for long distance cast or anything like that. You're basically just dropping down. So the shorter, the better for me with this. I will take my standard seven foot rod, 2,500 pin, 10 pound braid. Again, I got 15 pound leader on this i always start with 15 no matter what uh just to see if i could get them to bite that because the less the better you understand so i always start with 15 if they start breaking me off or there's some big fish around i'll bump it up to 20 but i'm already i'm always tying on 15 before i leave the house this is just my seven foot rod i will keep this in a different position on the kayak because we're around those pilings, those bridges, right up against them basically. So I'm finding a lot of my stuff is scraping up against it, it's beating it up. So after about three trips out there, I try to, I, I basically just reorganize the kayak for sheep's head fishing. And I'll keep this rod on there. Basically I got a jig head tied on, ready to throw with something if I see it blowing up. During the fall months, there are the big bulls around. So I'll keep this guy, if I'm dropping for sheeps, and I see a school of something, then I can just pull up my sheep's head rod, grab this one, I already got it rigged up and ready, chase them down, I am on the kayak, chase them down and start casting. Me and Sean Lawless did a video a few weeks back um, from the Lawless tie where that's, this exact scenario happened. We were sheep's head fishing, Sean came across on a school of reds, and next thing you know, we're pedaling out, chasing these things for 45 minutes. It was a blast. All right guys, basically everything I'm taking on the kayak is on this table right here and I'll go through it. Um, we'll start with the, the jigs, the sheep's head jigs, uh, Frisky Fins. I get these from Fis Frisky Fins, he makes these. There's two styles, there's this swing style jig, right? And then there's the solid one that doesn't swing, it's just kind of fixed in there. Different sizes, different colors. Uh, I've dedicated this tackle box just for these. So I've really gone in there and wrote. So you guys there, I got three quarters there. Um, I got that in all the compartments. So I know what I'm working with. Here I got half ounce. You know, I think there's like three half ounces here. Um, 
just kind of keep it organized. But this is what's been producing for me. Um, this color, actually, the purple and the white, that's what's been producing. A lot of guys in the area, the same situation. Frisky fins. I keep this little packet of split shots and really, really small hooks. I haven't had to use this yet, but I see a lot of guys suggesting this. When the fish are being finicky, when they're not wanting to bite these, they'll switch it up, basically use split shots to get it down there and these little tiny hooks with a fiddler on it or a shrimp. And this is just for more of those finicky fish or the harder bite days, you can switch it up to this. Taking two size leaders with me. I'm taking the 15 pound, what I have tied on, and then I'll take 20 pound. When the fish are big or there's a lot of structure around, they're pulling, they're breaking you off, you can bump it up to 20. But these are the two that I'll take, the 15 and the 20. This is SeaWorks. This is what I use. This has always, I use this for everything, for surf, for casting, everything. I like SeaWorks. I like their price. It's quality. So, but any leader will work. Some sort of bait bucket to keep your fiddler crabs or shrimp in. Um, I've been using this one just because it's just an easier reach. Um, you can use a smaller one. Like if I was just going to do like a dozen or two fiddler crabs, I would probably take this. But when we've been going, we've been getting large amounts. <laughs> so, so I've been taking this guy. But you'll definitely need one of these or something like it to keep your live bait in. Anchor long rope that's not your anchor rope and i'll show you why in a minute but i've kind of this is dedicated to sheep's head fishing i keep this on on a separate bag on my kayak kind of out of the way until i need it shovel and small cooler you don't need a really big cooler um sheep's head are barely small so this little small cooler works for me and of course the landing net now we'll go over the kayak. I'll show you how I set it up. I got ev everything basically broken down out of it, except for, you know, my little tools I got on the side, things like that I keep all the time. But there'll be no need for this anchor. There'll be no need for this rod holder. So I'll show you. And what I would probably do is because those are just yak attack uh, accessories. They're real easy to take off. If I was going straight for sheep's head, that's all I was gonna be doing. I would just take both those things off when, before I left the house. Because of those bridge pilings, because you're up against structure, you're just constantly bumping up against it, grinding it, and I don't want to mess up my stuff. As far as the pole position and when you're on, I will keep my sheep's head rod, the one I'm using for the sheeps, in my hand. I don't want this guy sticking out the side at an angle. You're going to bust up into those pilings. It's going to break your rod is what's going to happen. <laughs> eventually it's gonna happen so I do have a pole holder right here on the side that keeps the rod fairly straight up it's still got a little bit of an angle but it's in my view you know when they're behind me I'm not really paying attention to them but this guy is right here I can see it I still got room to drop down for sheep's fishing it's not totally in my way you know um, this is the best method I've found on my kayak for taking a second rod. Another great option is if you have like the crate style that you keep in the back that has the rod holders that holds the rod straight up. Again, that would be awesome, but you gotta be careful with those two because especially if you're getting into like lower bridges and things like that, you don't want the tops of your rods to hit and possibly break. For me, in the Old Town Sportsman, this, this um, rod holder, this flush mount I have on the side, that's what I've been using to keep my second rod close to me while I'm dropping down for sheeps. For the demonstration on how to bait these fiddler crabs, because that's what you will be using, fiddler crabs or uh, live shrimp. I don't have any fiddlers, so I got a little piece of fish bites here. I put a couple eyes on it, so that represents the head. <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to come up underneath it. So those are the eyes. I'm just going to flip him over. And you don't want to get near the head. So kind of back down here on either side of the corner, 
you'll pop you'll pop this guy through you'll work him through the shell you kind of got to be careful and that way he'll kind of hang at an angle like that so i haven't hit his head so he's still alive so you want this guy moving all his little legs will be moving he's kind of hooked in there and that's how you want to rig those fiddler crabs you're going to use a shovel like this a short handled shovel this is perfect. I wish it was the flathead style and not the spade. The flathead would, would produce a little bit better, but this works. I already had it in the backyard. So this is for scraping barnacles and stuff off the side of the bridges to chum up, chum up the water, basically. So you can kind of go around the bridges, scrape the barnacles off, maybe move to the next piling, scrape those off, and then go back where you started and start fishing. So this guy will just go in the back of the yak. My cooler back here this will this would be deployed so usually my cooler is running this way so i can do an easy access you know just kind of reach around behind my seat do an easy access but when i'm sheep's heading i'll throw it to the side to give my shovel some more room in there i'll take one of these bungee style leashes here and you can use whatever on your kayak and I'll attach it to my bait bucket. Let's throw this guy in the back also. Have the fiddlers and everything in there and that way if you wanted to wash them out or let them sit for a minute you could drop it down in there without fear of losing it. Usually put my net like on my cooler something like that. Just to kind of, just to kind of get it out of the way. This rubber holds pretty well. I mean, this unless you're just in some really strong wind or current, that's not going anywhere. You even put it this way like that around the cooler. So I got my handle facing me with the seats up. So I'm sitting here, it's an easy grab. Jigs will go under the seat. I think I got my, I'll take this little miscellaneous tackle box too. My jigs will just go here for easy grab. Miscellaneous can go back under the seat. Leader. Again, just whatever kayak you have, you know, you know your compartments, you know your kayak. You kind of situate this how you want. I'm just basically showing you the least amount of stuff to take um you know when i am like trout or red fishing things like when i'm fishing for multiple different things at once i got a lot more stuff and i realized real quickly i didn't need all of it it was just getting in the way and it was causing problems so i'll completely disregard disregard this when sheep's head fishing because of the rope um what you're doing with your anchor there is you're not anchoring straight down you're putting it up on the bridge pylons sometimes wrapping it around a pole just to hold your kayak there because sometimes you want to stay in one spot or even if you want to get up on the bridge piling and kind of walk around and fish that way too. So with this rope and the current pushing the yak and, and the cement, this rope, this parachute cord basically, it's constantly rubbing on that concrete and I don't trust it. <laughs> <laughs> like it just it looks like it's gonna wear through and break and then my kayak's floating off and i'm stuck on a bridge piling in winter with 30 degree water so what i'll use is this heavier rope still got my anchor i'll just tie this tie this rope to the anchor and then at that point i can tie it to the kayak Right, so I can put this anchor kind of out of the way. Got a really long rope. You can tie this guy whatever spot I want on the kayak. You can tie it in the front, on the side, on the other side. You can tie it from the back. And this is just going to keep the yak from floating away. So really, I can get up on the next to the bridge piling, and I can take this guy, and you see how long it is and strong right so let's say this tree here was the bridge piling basically i gotta throw the throw the anchor around and that'll hold 
my kayak. Obviously it would be a lot closer to here, but you get the picture. It's gonna hold it. My kayak's not gonna float away while I'm walking around on those bridges. Then when you're moving spots, you would just pull it in, pull your kayak back to you, get your anchor in there, and you can get back in the yak off the pilot and move spots. Figure out the rope anchor situation. That was scary when I was out there with that parachute cord and I was just watching it grind against that concrete. I was like, yeah, I'm losing my kayak today. So again, I had that rope in the garage. It was just kind of a matter of figuring out how long I needed it and where to keep it really when I wasn't using it. And then watching hours and hours of sheep's head fishing <laughs> on YouTube <laughs> to figure out, like I didn't know what, there's such a subtle bite that I basically just thought little bait fish were pecking at my, my crab and uh, it's them, it's them. They have such a subtle bite I wasn't sure how to hook them. I had to watch, I had to research. I had to take somebody out. Somebody had to go out there and show me basically like, hey, that's a bite, yank, you know? So that's what you're doing. And that's another thing with sheep's head. You have to really give it a yank because of their mouth. They have all those teeth and a lot of bone right there in their mouth. So you gotta get through that to be able to pull them in. I haven't been a fan of sheep's head fishing up until this point because I just didn't know how to do it. <laughs> I didn't know how to do it. I would get out there. I would get frustrated. Uh, I would have an idea, and then I wouldn't know what the bite felt like, and I just didn't put in the effort to even ask the questions. Once I started doing that, once I started talking to the guys, the guys um, from North Florida Inshore Slayers Facebook group, they're a huge help. I mean, that's all they catch out there. Huge sheep's head, huge flounder. So I went right to them, and I asked questions with them. Those guys are awesome. If you haven't checked out their Facebook page, go ahead and check it out north florida inshore slayers um bunch of cool dudes so a lot of videos on there too of sheep so i was able to watch those videos figure out what i was doing wrong keep after it and again starting to become successful i am no master by any means um but i'm starting to even listen getting the kayak tied off took me like three tries like i didn't know what i was doing i was like i don't want to get up on this bridge paddling <laughs> so that's an expensive boat you know so once I figured all that out, started getting more comfortable on those things, um, figuring out where to position the boat with the current so I'm just not getting beat up. Once I started figuring those out, the fishing came naturally. You know, that's what we're doing. We're fishing. If you guys are enjoying the videos, hit me a like, hit me a subscribe. It really helps out the rhythm of the channel. You can check me out on Facebook. Check me out on Instagram. Till next time, guys.